Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Looking at Bitcoin to the US dollar on Coinbase, four hour chart, guys. And yesterday we spoke, Bitcoin was sitting up uh, in this uh, support zone um, at, uh, I think it was sitting somewhere around uh, 64, 6,500, somewhere thereabouts, guys. Um, and I told you I did not think that this zone was going to hold. I told you I think that this zone was eventually going to end up breaking down. That's exactly what happened. Price ended up breaking down. Um, very, very, very um, quickly hit this zone at 63.50. I warned you about I said that might end up holding, but I wasn't sure. I told you if that broke down, then more than likely it was going to drop back down, uh, possibly to 6,000, at least to this 8865 FIB level. Price came down, hit a perfect hit off the 8865 FIB, and then uh, bounced right back up. Um, I was going to, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Um, I was going to short it from this uh, 63.50. I told you guys if it dropped below 6,300, I was going to short it down to six. Uh, I ended up not making that trade just because I wasn't uh, wasn't in here. But uh, fortunately, price broke down. Didn't quite bake 6,000 anyway. Um, so um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't get into that trade. Although I think I would have probably taken my profit off the table at uh, the 8865. But, uh, but anyway, guys, um, price ended up bouncing off the 8865, coming right back up, um, and now it's sitting back into this support zone um, right uh, just below 6,500. Uh, what was support is acting as resistance, I should say. So this is now acting as resistance. This uh, 6,600 to 6,500 zone is acting as resistance, as, it, as will more than likely if price does climb higher. This zone up here, the eight, uh, what was the 618 FIB level coming down. Um, so between about uh, 6850 and 6750, guys, that should act as a strong resistance as well, in my opinion, more than likely. Now, I do think that uh, that we possibly have another leg down. Um, and depending on how, yeah, you know, guys, you could really count this a couple different ways. Um, and I've been kind of looking at this. And in my opinion, I think the best count is more than likely looking at a one two, three, four, and back down for the five. Now, you could count this as a three, four, and this as your wave five. That's possible, guys. I don't really see five waves in here. However, we could count this as a one, two, three, four, back down for one more wave five. That's also a very pro pro possible count, guys. In fact, actually, that would probably be my primary. So one, two, three, four, back down for the uh, the fifth and I don't I, I'm not sure this fifth leg is extended so I do believe that we're looking at within the fifth wave we've got five waves so I'm think we're looking at a one two three four back down for one more leg down for the fifth wave more than likely to come down and test this support zone between 5880 spit and 5780 doesn't mean that has to happen, guys. Just means, in my opinion, I think that's very likely. Unless we get an influx of volume coming in, there's a good chance we're going to come back down and test this support zone. Again, doesn't mean it's going to happen, guys. If it does end up coming down, testing the support, guys, we might be looking at a double bottom. However, most bullish scenario is within this microstructure. If we disregard this over here and we look at just this microstructure here, we can see that uh, price came down here before almost created a perfect double bottom from this point to this point so if i count this as my double bottom and now we're uh now we're uh, bouncing up from that double bottom that's a possibility now this could just be a bull trap excuse me to trap people into thinking that we've hit bottom now we're trending up um, i don't think we, we don't have the volume if i turn all volume uh the volume on here guys um, we just aren't seeing the volume follow through to call this an impulse wave up, to call this a, a trend reversal at all. You know, we've got one candle here, one four hour candle here, one major sell off candle here, and that's it. We don't have the massive um, influx of volume that we would see from this prior low. You know, here was the prior low. This would be where the this would be where the double bottom would be. And then for about 12 hours, we had absolutely nothing. We had a major bounce here and kind of just kind of fizzling out, had absolutely nothing, got a strong rejection off of what was support acting as resistance, as I said, between the 6600-6500. And if I blow this up and we look inside this smaller microstructure here, so if I go swing high, swing low from this, we can see price came up, hit the 236 FIB level initially, couldn't get through, couldn't get through. Finally impulsed up from there, not impulse, but finally bounced up from there. Now it's hit the three uh, three eight two and had a very strong rejection. Now it looks like it's coming up and may test the three eight two again. Um, but until we get past 
this on this structure until we get past the 618 fib. So until we get past about, uh, call it 6800, somewhere thereabouts, guys, until we clear this 6800 to 6870, uh, call it 6870, call it 7900 a bit to play it safe. If we get north of, or excuse me, 6900 to play it safe, if we get north of 6900, guys, then I'm going to start to think that maybe we're, maybe we're, maybe we're starting to trend up. Maybe we've hit bottom, you know, and then, uh, you know, and then maybe I'll start to get a little more, um, a, a little more optimistic on a longer term rise, but I'm just not seeing it right now, guys, at all. Right now, I'm just still seeing this as a retrace, subway four down, back down for a subway five to complete a larger wave five. Um, so, in my opinion, guys, that's kind of kind of the way things are looking right now. I've got a little more of a bearish outlook overall, even though we might still see some uh, some temporary um, um, increase in price. Coming down here, looking at our indicators, we can see our stock RSI. This is on the four hour stock RSI sitting at around 42. Uh, not looking, uh, uh, yeah, still, I mean, a little oversold, not, not actually not oversold, but, uh, you know, it's kind of trending up, nothing real impulsive looking. We can see the RSI hit bottom slowly trending up, but not that major bounce and reversal that we would hope for that would kind of indicate that we were uh, that we were um, entering into strength. Actually, not at all. It's kind of meandering over here as we sit at about 35, somewhere thereabouts. We come in here, look at the daily. Daily stock hasn't even moved. Still very, very oversold, guys. Um, looking at the uh, looking at the uh, RSI, sitting somewhere around 36, somewhere thereabouts, a little bit of a bounce off the bottom. Nothing real impulsive looking at all as of now. If we look at our, uh, our MACD, Again, on the daily, still looking at no signs of reversing course, guys. Just the signal line, MACD line, just trending down, straight down. Um, just looking extremely, extremely bearish so far, guys. Remember the big picture, though, guys. Remember the big picture. I've warned you guys. I told you guys about this many, many times. Um, I told you that every single time we've had a rally, this goes all the way back to December's high. Every time we've had a rally since coming down from December's high, the first one went up, looked very, very impulsive, and then just crashed down. Second one went up, still looked fairly impulsive, but you can see the trajectory was just a little more leaning over to the right, a little bit weaker, came back down, crashed back down, third try, came up a little more, a little impulsive, but also a little weaker, you know, still kind of trending a little more sideways than these last two, and then it came crashing back down, and then this is our fourth attempt, guys, where you can see it still is, is uh, was even, even weaker than the prior three, moving more lateral, moving more sideways than up, um, and now we're came crashing back down. The good news is, I, you know, this, normally we were having we were having a longer correction in between, longer correction in between, and this kind of just came up and came right back down. The the the, um, the 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 time span that it took to crash from this high to this low, you know, it's gotten back down very very quickly. You know, so some would say that might be bear. Some would say it's just immediately turning around. I would say that it looks like the market is trying to correct as quick as it can, preparing for that larger bull run. Um, in the future, guys. So, I mean, the quicker it can get down, the quicker this market can bottom out, the quicker that we can get rid of all the sellers and start entering into a buyers and get a more sustainable bull run. Okay, if we look down here, I pointed this out yesterday, we've got this demand zone between 57.75, 53.30. If this demand zone ends up breaking down, guys, our last hope is going to be this ascending support that's been in um, that's been in play for quite some time, guys. This will be kind of the last resort before we come down to our bottom support zone between 4700, 4300. I'm hoping it doesn't get that low. I do think that would probably... Excuse me. I do think that would probably be the bottom if it does get that low, guys. We're going to see that if we look at our volume profile, we've got quite a bit of a gap between this, uh, the bottom of this demand zone at 5330 and the top of this um, uh, support between 5700. Um, there's a little bit of a gap, guys, so I would expect if 5330 does break, our one chance of catching this would be this ascending support line, depending on how long price ends up meandering over. Um, if that breaks down, it'll just be a free fall down to this support, um, at least to 4,700, possibly as low as 4,300, in my opinion, guys. If this support can hold, not even this demand zone here, if we create a lower low, I'm even okay with that. I'm looking at this ascending support line, guys. If this ascending support line can hold, I'm going to remain um, um, long term, remain very, very bullish. Um, in, in other words, I'm going to keep my my projection that mid to late September, we should see the start of a longer term bull run, in my opinion. If that does end up breaking down, guys, 
then we could be in for some more pain. I still think we'll, I still think, I'm still very bullish on Bitcoin long term. I just think this correction could play out much longer if this ascending support line does end up breaking down. So we'll have to wait and see how that ends up playing out, playing out, guys. But things are moving quicker than they have in the past. If I come in the past here, guys, many, many people have pointed out we've moved sideways for so long. Um, in the past, after major bull runs here, moved kind of sideways for, you know, since 2014, 2016, almost two years of sideways movement before it started moving back up. Yes, that's correct, but who knew about Bitcoin between 2014 and 2016? Nobody. The more people that know about this, guys, the quicker the market is going to move. Now we've got people with institutional money wanting to get into Bitcoin. Um, it's just a matter of time before that's going to happen. So I hear some people saying this correction could last at least two years, if, and they're basing that on prior history. I don't think that's the case at all. I think the longest this thing lasts may be the longest until the end of the year. If, assuming if ETFs don't get approved in September, that could elongate it into possibly the beginning of next year. But I think that would be it, guys. I think I think the beginning of next year would more than likely be it. And then we're going to see the bull run that everyone is waiting for. But in my opinion, I'm still optimistic that the end of September will be that longer term bull run. OK, as we look at the uh, uh, Bitcoin, look at our moving averages and uh, expert into moving averages, Bitcoin or excuse me. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin prices rose on above. This is on the four hour has risen above this um, eight day moving average ex, or excuse me, exponential moving averages. Price is right above. That's now acting as a little bit as support. Ideally, I'd like to see price right above this 21 day um, EMA. If we can get above the 21 day EMA, that's generally a good um, indication of a shift in momentum. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. We come out here, we look at the daily. We can still see the uh, Bollinger Bands are still stretched. We're still sitting at the bottom of these Bollinger Bands, guys. I'm um, just kind of sitting there not getting much of a bounce at all. We'll wait and see how this, so far the daily candle looks okay, but still not seeing a lot of uh, um, impulsive moves. I don't like that we had no real reversal candle here, guys. If this really is the reverse that we were all hoping for, usually you'd see a nice bottom reversal candle. Um, we, we just haven't seen that at all. Um, we've got no indication that this thing is reversed course at all. Um, so I'd like to see more of a, you know, a, a greater sign that we've hit bottom. And right now we just haven't seen that, which tells me I still think we have yet to hit bottom. Again, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to scream it from the rooftop, guys. I am a bullet heart. You guys know that by now. Uh, but right now I still, in my opinion, I still think there's a good chance that uh, we are going to come back down and test at least 6,000, at least 6,000. Again, in my opinion, we've got the eight day EMA on the daily chart just rose below the 50 day moving average. That's a very, very bearish sign. 21 day EMA has risen below the 50 to five day um, EMA. It's another bearish sign, guys. So things just aren't looking a lot very strong in the market. But it doesn't mean things can't turn around, guys. In any kind of bullish news out from the SEC, they pushed the decision off till late September. That does not mean they have to give the December the decision in late September. It could be any time before that. Um, just more than likely, it's not going to be later than that. So we'll have to wait and see how this ends up playing out, guys. But uh, in my opinion, as far as trade setups, guys, I'm just kind of I'm just going to continue to scalp trades, small little day trades here and there. You know, price is coming up. We're hitting this uh, support zone here. I do think price may come up and hit this zone. If it does, I may play a quick short um, from this zone back down to at least the 7865. From this down to at least 45, 6400, excuse me. Um, if it hits uh, to 6750, I may play it down to 6400. If we do break above this zone, guys, I think it'll be a very, very quick rise to at least 7400. So if we break above, call it 6900, I think it'll be a quick rise to 7400. And I'd probably play that position, probably conservatively get out at 63 you know, just to play a conservative. Um, from the downside, guys, once we bounce off this, if we end up impulsing right back down, um, breaking below this 6350, I'll more than likely end up taking a trade, or excuse me, shorting it down to, in my opinion, more than likely at least 6100. So just quick scalp trades here and there, guys, until I see uh, volume improve, that's all I'm going to be looking for. So these are my quick thoughts on Bitcoin. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, guys, I certainly do appreciate an upvote, a re-steam, um, or a like, depending on where you're viewing this. And until next time, guys, please trade safe. This is working. Signing out.